Yes, Ponte, we can hear you. Good All morning. Right. Good morning. <clears throat> now, uh, today we start with mindfulness of mind. You can see the Pali. Can you see Pali? Yes. Uh, hold on, Dante. I need to. Yes. Okay. I uh, read Pali also uh, for people to remember. It's not very difficult because only one word you got to repeat and then the rest is repetition. Asasi Samit Sikati, Pasasi Samit Sikati, Asasi Samit Sikati, Pasasi Samit Sikati. These are the phrases that you repeat uh, at each uh, sentence. Let me read it for you. Chit Patisang Vedi, Asasi Samit Sikati. Today we are going to discuss uh, mindfulness of the mind and uh, therefore uh, it is very good for you to remember this Pali words. Chitta Patisang Vedi Asasi Sami Zikati Chitta Patisang Vedi Pasasi Sami Zikati Abhipa Modayan Chittan Asasi Sami Zikati Abhipamodayan Chittan Pasasi Sami Zikati Samadhan Chittan Asasi Sami Zikati Samadhan Chittan Pasasi Sami Zikati Vimojan Chittan Asasi Sami Zikati Vimojan Chittan Pasasi Sami Zikati now, let us see the meaning. Mindfulness of mind. He trains thus, I shall breathe in experience in the mind. He trains thus, I shall breathe out experience in the mind. He trains thus, I shall breathe in gladdening the mind. He trains thus, I shall breathe out, gladdening the mind. He trains thus, I shall breathe in, concentrating the mind. He shall breathe, he trains thus, I shall breathe out, concentrating the mind. He trains thus, I shall breathe in, liberating the mind. He trains thus, I shall breathe out, liberating the mind. Reading these sentences is very easy. Anybody who can read English can read this very easily. But the meaning is very uh, profound, deep, and very, very uh, useful. What is the first sentence says? I shall train thus. I train as I shall breathe in experience in the mind. How can we experience the mind? You experience the mind not by talking about it, reading about it, or listening to talks about it. You have to pay hundred percent attention, pure, clean attention. When we pay attention to the mind, we can know the mind, experience the mind, with its contents. You experience the mind with its contents. If there is no contents, you cannot experience the mind. If the mind is called uh, I shall, we, we, we just read, uh, you see the 
chit. You can see the word chit. Chit means uh, the variety of things that mind does. Chit. What does it do? It has uh, various mental states. In uh, Mahasatipatthana Sutta, under the under Chitta Anupasana, you see Saragangva Chittang, Saragang Chittang Ti Pajanati. The mind with greed, mind with lust, mind with desire, we understand this is the mind with desire. Saragang. Vitaragang what is chittang, vitaragang chittang tipajanati. There you say, when the greed fades away, at that moment you know the mind is free from greed. Free from greed. The mind is without greed. First you knew that the mind was with greed or it can be other way around. First you see the mind is without greed. When eyes, ears, nose, tongue, body and mind get in touch with their sensory objects, sight, sound, smell, taste and touch, then greed, it is possible for greed to arise. At that time you can know this mind is with greed. So you experience the mind at that time with greed. We use one of these words for craving. We can use craving, greed, lust, attachment, love, liking, uh, inclination, and so forth. So many words you can use. But you know, in ex explaining things, you cannot use all synonyms in one uh, sentence, like uh, giving a sort of dictionary of synonyms. So you use only one word, that is Sraga. Only the word Raga is used in that particular context. context. And then, you, as you meditate, Pay total attention to see how the raga or desire work, what it does to your mind, what it does to you. Are you happy or you are unhappy? So you can see the uh, impact, the results of raga desire or craving. And then it fades away then it is called, there is no desire. Then the mind can have uh, hatred, just the opposite of desire. Hatred, anger, then it is called dosa. When the mind, mind normally doesn't have greed, hatred all the time. When a situation arises through our eyes, ears, nose, tongue, and body, and so on, then hatred or anger can arise in our mind. At that time, you know, this mind is with anger. When we, we become mindful, practice metta, practice patience, practice understanding, and then that hatred slowly fades away then we know the mind is free from hatred. That is the mind, that's how we know the mind. When mind is uh, like that, suddenly confusion can arise by seeing, hearing, and so on. Uh, confusion can arise. You cannot make a decision. The mind is not very clear. 
we hear people, oh, I'm, go, I'm confused now. And that time we understand that the mind is with confusion. When the confusion fades away by trying to understanding, developing insight, practicing uh, uh, mindfulness, and seeing uh, rising and falling, and as wisdom arises, confusion fades away. Then we know the mind is free from confusion. So forth, experience in the mind, meaning this kind of experience. When they fades, then while experiencing that state of mind, we breathe in and we breathe out, experiencing that particular state of mind. Then you see what happens. He trains us, I shall breathe in, gladdening the mind. When this state fades away, greed fades away, hatred fades away, confusion fades away, jealousy fades away, and so forth. When they fades away, mind becomes glad. Mind becomes glad. Mind doesn't become glad without any reason. When these defilements fades away, disappear, then there will be glad mind. And that is called gladdening the mind. Gladdening happens like that. So with that gladness or gladdening, we breathe in and with the gladness we breathe out. Then what happened? He trains thus, I shall breathe in concentrating the mind. Ah, that is how we gain concentration. Concentration doesn't arise when all these mental states are in the mind. So we have to get rid of this. And then uh, concentration arises. Then I shall breathe in with that state. Then the last pair is I trains thus, or he trains thus, I shall breathe in liberating the mind. He trains the mind, he, he trains thus, I shall breathe out liberating the mind. How can we liberate the mind? We go to the next uh, uh, slice to see. I do, Buddha said, uh, one is not, if one is not, one is confused, one cannot see this state. All these states one must remember. How mind got uh, free, uh, how mind uh, first uh, we free from greed and the hatred, delusion and so forth, how they happen. And then only that person can practice mindfulness of breathing. And that's why Buddha said, I do not say that there is the development of mindfulness of breathing for one who is forgetful, who is not fully aware. So we got to remember what happens to the mind, how defilement arises, how they fade away. We must see this uh, sequence. When we see this sequence, we become uh, very uh, firm uh, and we make uh, more effort. Uh, I think some of you are there the, in the meditation all this morning. We have to make effort. First, we have to make effort to remember what it happens, what happened. And then we must remember how we got rid of them. 
and Buddha said that is why on that occasion a bhikkhu about contemplating mind as mind, contemplating mind as mind. If we are forgetful of this sequence, this procedure, this way of arising unarisen, unwholesome mental states and remembering how we got rid of them, overcoming those uh, mental states, and then mindful, ardent, ardent. Ardent is another word for effort we make to overcome our defilements and fully aware. So in the mindfulness of breathing, we should not let the mind uh, uh, go in and out, in and out, in and out. It must always be in or on the topic, on the practice. And therefore it is, the person should be fully aware and mindful, having put away covetousness and grief for the world. What is covetousness? Covetousness is desire for things that belong to somebody else. Covetousness is the desire, greed for possessing something belong, belonging to somebody else. That's called covetousness. And what is grief? When we do not get that, then grief arises in our mind. We wanted something that belonged to somebody else, and then we don't get it, then grief arises, disappointment arises. For the world, the world here is not uh, outside world. In the Buddha's teaching, world is us. Covetousness arises in this world, grief arises in this world, mindfulness arises in this world, and awareness arises in this. In this world means this one fathom body with its consciousness. Buddha has repeated this in several places like uh, Rohita Sasutta and so forth, uh, in Sangyutra Nikaya, Angutra Nikaya and so forth. The world for us is our own five aggregates, form, feeling, perception, thought and consciousness. This is our world. So, uh, grief for the world, covetousness and grief for the world. So. That is why Buddha said in the discourse, Naham Bhikkhe Mutta Sati Sasampajanasa Anapan Sati Bhavanam Vadami Tasmati Bhikkhe Chitte Chitta Anapasi Tasmin Same Bhikkhu Vyarati Atapi Sampajano Satima Vinay Logya Vijaya Dhuvamanasam He said in Pali. Now, We say liberating the mind. Now we can see in the next slides, liberating the mind. What do we liberate the mind from? Ragato vimo chankitanga sisami sigati. We said in the slide, in the previous slides, liberating the mind. Liberating from what? Ragato vimo chiti. Sikati. Ragato vimo chankitang. Asasi sami is sikati. Dosa to vimochi and chitang, asasi sami is sikati. Dosa to vimochi and chitang, asasi sami is sikati. Manato, manato, vimochi and chitang, asasi sami is sikati, and so forth. And then, vichiki chaya, vimochi and chitang. O, tinato, O and Middhato, Uddhachato, and uh, Ahiri. Let me read it in Pali so that it is easy for you to understand. 
because you don't know uh, Pali. Liberating the mind from greed, I shall breathe in, he trains himself. Liberating the mind from greed, I shall breathe out, he trains thus himself. Similarly, liberating the mind from hatred, I breathe in and liberating the mind from hatred, I breathe out. Liberating the mind from delusion, I breathe in. Liberating the mind, I breathe out. Uh, liberating, the, liberating the mind from delusion, I breathe out. Liberating the mind from pride, I breathe in. Liberating the mind from pride, I breathe out. I mentioned greed, hate, and delusion, but pride. How can pride arise while breathing in? While, while practicing mindfulness of breathing, how can pride can arise? Pride can arise thinking that I am a meditator. Others are not meditators. Therefore, I am superior. They are inferior. So that is how pride can arise. You know these defilements can sneak into our mind any time, any moment we become unmindful, these can arise in our mind, sneak into our mind. They, keep, they are waiting for an opportunity to invade the mind. Then wrong view. There are many wrong views. 62 of them are mentioned in Diga Nikaya, first sutta called Brahma Jala Sutta. In Brahma Jala Sutta, Buddha mentioned 62 wrong views. And there are 10 wrong views uh, that Buddha, that we mentioned this morning. Uh, in various suttas, Buddha mentioned them. Uh, those uh, 10 are uh, thinking that uh, there is no results of giving, no results of offering, no results of sharing, uh, no this world, no next world, no mother. That means there is no benefit in supporting mother, no benefit of supporting parent, father, and uh, there are no spontaneous birth, uh, and there are no beings who have attained uh, supernormal powers and living in this world, and so forth. These are called wrong views. In addition, there can be uh, many other uh, wrong views, uh, believing in uh, extremes, uh, yes, wrong views. Then uncertainty. Uncertainty is uh, doubt, uh, confusion. Uh, so, Doubt has uh, wholesome doubt, unwholesome doubt. Wholesome doubt is uh, with regard to knowing Dhamma. Unwholesome doubt is uh, never to uh, satisfy with any answer. Uh, that is called uh, chronicle skeptics. Chronic skeptics, no matter how uh, correct answer you give to their questions, they would not be satisfied. They would simply be uh, maybe uh, trying to ans ask another question. And that they always remain in uncertainty. Uh, so, uh, so this as chronic skeptics or chronic skepticism is a wrong uh, def uh, or a defilement. And stiffness, stiffness means rigidity, uptightness. Uh, while meditating, uh, we can, uh, instead of relaxing, 
uh, instead of making it easy, we can be stiff, and that also is a defilement. So mind, we try to liberate the mind from stiffness. And torpor, torpor is another part of sleepiness. And then agitation, restlessness. These are hindrances. Uh, hindrances arise. The hindrances are uh, temporary things, temporary defilements. You can get rid of them temporarily by attaining jhanas uh, during meditation. When we have faith in the Buddha, Dhamma, Sangha, uh, temporarily you can overcome them. But again, uh, agitation can arise. And I mean, these hindrances. Agitation is one hindrance. The stiffness and torpor is another hindrance. Doubt is another hindrance. So forth. Greed is another hindrance. These hindrances arise in our mind. We can overcome them temporarily, but they can arise again and we overcome. As long as fetters are there, hindrances arise. Fetters are like hindrances are uh, plant on the ground. Fetters are the Network of root, root underground. Network of root underground always gives sprout uh, shoots uh, for new plants. Those new plants are like hindrances. Network of root underground is fetus. And below them there is another uh, layer of defilement. They are called asava. Asava. Kama asava, bhava asava, ditta asava, avidya asava, adi. For asava. Asava means influxes. And under asavas, there is another layer of defilements called anusaya. Raga anusaya, those anusaya. There are seven anusayas listed in uh, Madhupindika Sutta in s- several places. Angutri Nikai and so forth. So, when we meditate, we may experience agitation, sleepiness, stiffness, torpor, and so forth. During that time, we can overcome. When we get out of meditation, they can uh, flood our mind with them. So, when we meditate, we liberate them, we liberate the mind, we liberate the mind from these defilements temporarily. And uh, one day we will be able to overcome them, get rid of them, never to return them again. And this is what we do when we do. Uh, mindfulness of the mind, liberating the mind, liberating the mind. So, we, we read earlier, in earlier discourse, uh, see that he says thus, I shall breathe in liberating the mind. I shall, he says thus, I shall breathe out liberating the mind. While breathing in with their eyes, we get rid of them. And then, with the same state of mind, we breathe out. And we do not let them arise again. As long as we remain, we remain mindful. And therefore, uh, this mindfulness of uh, breathing, we use the breath as the theme to keep the mind focused so that all these uh, other distractions, other defilements will not invade our mind. It is not not only one-time practice, uh, but lifetime practice as long as we breathe, 
of course, we, we know we breathe until we die. We start our life with the breath and we end our life with the breath. That, mean, that means the mindfulness of breathing is ongoing, lifelong commitment. Uh, it is not one-time commitment, lifelong commitment. Just like we breathe every day, hundreds of times, all our life we breathe millions of times, we try to practice this mindfulness, this breathing with mindfulness. We do the breathing with mindfulness as much as we can. So, we try to make our life simple, to have time for paying attention to the breath, so that we can use this ongoing lifelong breath as a part of our meditation. Now, friends, this is, uh, as I mentioned this morning, I give a half an hour talk, and then we meditate. Now let us uh, do our meditation. I think uh, for that, uh, let me see. I want to, uh, let me see. Okay. I want to open this slide. Uh, and uh, make it bigger. Okay, can you see this slide? Metta? Yeah. We can see it, Dante. Thank you. Okay, now we recite together this metta, meditation, and start with our mindfulness of breathing meditation. We first begin with metta meditation, and then switch on to mindfulness of breathing. May all beings be happy and secure. May all beings have happy minds. Whatever living being there may be, without exception, weak or strong, long, large, medium, short, subtle or gross, visible or invisible, living near or far, born or coming to birth, may all beings have happy minds. Let no one deceive another, nor despise anyone anywhere. Neither from anger nor ill will should anyone wish harm to another. As a mother would risk her own life to protect her only child, even so, towards all living beings, one should cultivate a boundless heart. One should cultivate for all the world a heart of boundless loving friendliness, above, below, and all around, unobstructed, without hatred or resentment, whether standing, walking, sitting, lying down or whenever awake, one should develop this mindfulness. This is called divinely dwelling here, not falling into erroneous views, but virtuous and endowed with vision. Removing desire for sensual pleasures, one comes never again to birth in the womb. Okay, with this background, let us pay attention to our breath. Breath is such a precious subject of meditation. And therefore, all the Buddhas attain Buddhahood by practicing mindfulness of breathing. And therefore, we use the breath as our subject of meditation. 
so we sit comfortably and pay attention to our breath. While paying attention to the breath, first we notice a place where the breath touches. It, it may touch our nostrils, tip of the nose, or upper lips. This variation depends on the formation of nose. So each person has to breathe in and out to find out where the breath touches, and then focus the mind there. When we breathe in, the length of breath, we feel at the place where the breath touches, contact. At the point the breath touches, that is the contact, length depends on the point of contact. It may be a second, two seconds, three seconds. We can notice it at the place where the breath touches. And notice in this long, we call long inhaling as long inhaling, long exhaling as long exhaling. We breathe in and breathe out. If the inhaling and exhaling is short, noticing that short inhaling as short inhaling, short exhaling as short exhaling, we breathe in and breathe out. As we keep doing this, we will be able to find the entire breathing process that is called breath body. In the series of talks, in this series of talks I mentioned, breath body is the beginning, middle and end of each breath we notice. Each inhaling has the beginning, that is the point where the breath touches at the tip of the nose, so nostril, so upper lips, that is the beginning. Middle is our chest, end is the navel area. When we exhale, beginning of exhaling breath is navel area. Middle is the chest, end is the nostrils. We notice, notice them as our awareness see becoming sharper and sharper. Our awareness of, this, of these three points of inhaling breath and exhaling breath also become sharper and clearer. That is called knowing the entire breath body. Buddha said breath is one of the bodies. That is why in Anapana Sati Sutta, the discourse that we are using for our Zoom talk, there are four tetrads. First tetrad is mindfulness of the body. Second tetrad is mindfulness of feeling. Third the tetrad that we discussed today is the mindfulness of mind. Fourth tetrad that we shall discuss in future is the mindfulness of mental object. So as we breathe in and out, as we notice the entire breathing process, we know the breath body. 
Then what happened when we noticed the whole breath body without distractions? The breath becomes calmer and calmer and more and more relaxed. And notice that calm, relaxed mental state we breathe in and out. This is called Pasam Bhayankaya Sankara. Asasisami to Sikati. Pasam Bhayankaya Sankara. Pasasisami to Sikati. Pasam Bhayang means relaxing, tranquilizing the breath body, the mind and the rest of the body, all become relaxed and tranquil. That means at the beginning it is gross, as we keep paying attention to breath, it becomes softer and softer, gentler and gentler, and tranquil. Up to that point, we can gain very clear awareness of the breathing. So I think I must not talk too long. This may, may be enough for us to continue our practice. Let us continue this practice for another at least 20 minutes. By means of this meritorious deed, may I never join with the foolish, may I always join with the wise, until the time I attain Nibbana. May the suffering be free from suffering, may the fear struck be free from fear, may the grieving be free from grief, so too may all beings be from the highest realm of existence to the lowest, may all beings arisen in these realms, with form and without form, with perception and without perception, be released from all suffering and attain to perfect peace. Now with this uh, aspiration, we want to end this session and uh, even though we end this here, you continue your practice. You don't have to get up. Since we have other commitments, we stop here. With my regular wish, I want to wish all those who are in hospitals suffering from various diseases taken care of by very compassionate doctors, nurses, and hospital staff. May they recover very soon and return to their regular normal life and continue their Dhamma practice in good health and liberate themselves from samsaric suffering. May all the doctors, nurses, and hospital staffs who are taking care of these patients sacrificing their comfort and risking their own lives. May they continue their wonderful humanitarian service and practice Dhamma and liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those who have lost their loved ones, not in one or two places all over the world, may they, they may be grieving and we want to 
wish them to be free from grief, continue their Dhamma practice, and liberate themselves from suffering. Those leaders who are leading the world in many wholesome ways, may they have mindfulness and compassion to do their job more beneficially for everybody. May those who are suffering otherwise in various places, in war zones and in poverty-stricken area and those who are suffering from various types of discriminations, may they all be free from such unfortunate situations and have mental peace, have health, good health, to continue their Dhamma practice so that they also can liberate from samsaric suffering. May all those who are generously supporting various projects to feed the world, to uplift their spirit, bring up their life into a very wholesome state. May they continue their generous support to help the world in various ways. And all those whose categories I have not mentioned, and may they all be well, happy and peaceful, and finally they all attain liberation. With this, friends, I want to end this session. Okay. Thank you, Bhante. You are welcome. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you, Bhante. Thank you so much, Thank you, Bhante. 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 Thank you, Bhante.